What's up, bro? It is two days since my surgery. Uh, I got a varicocele litigation or some shit, right? So a varicocele I've mentioned on a previous video is when the veins in your balls like all tangle up and uh, it looks like a bag of worms. And I just wanted to like shout today because I feel a lot better, but um, I just want, like I feel a bit agitated and, and aggressive. I, I mentioned the story that I had had this checked out twice in the UK and with the NHS and they let me down. They said it was going to be a problem that, you know, you could just ignore it and stuff. And it was only when I really took it more seriously to realize it's not something to ignore. It's not something to like live with because it's unnatural. It, it's a, um, it's something that is heavily tied to infertility, which means you can't have kids. Like the, most of the guys who can't have kids have got a varicocele and 15% of guys in the world develop varicoceles. But it just got me like, like this kind of like male problem, especially when it comes to male like sexual health, testosterone, your testicles and everything. It just gets me like vexed of how how little it's cared about that like in the UK we have this, you know, this this narrative that the NHS are all heroes. Oh my God, so amazing. And there might be when it comes to emergencies, like if you've been hit by a car, they'll help you. If you've got cancer, they'll give you chemo or something for free. But like when it comes to these long standing problems, especially if they're male related, they're, they're not that valuable. They're not that helpful. And I see this at, like so often back there. And I just want you to like put yourself in my shoes and imagine through the worst period of my life, 2019, 2020, when, you know, I'm smoking weed every day. I hate my life. I'm depressed and everything. I'm working a full-time job. And at 8 a.m. of that day, that's when the GPs, like the hospital, like the um, doctor's place opens at 8 a.m. every Monday. Anyone who's in the UK knows this. So at 8 a.m., you have to call them. And if you call them at 8 or 1, your, your call won't go through. So you call at 8, but everyone's calling at 8 a.m., which means that your call doesn't go through today. You eventually do connect at 8 or 3. And they're like, oh, sorry, no more appointments. Uh, try, to try again tomorrow. And I'm stood outside of my office building. It's raining right now. And I want some privacy because I'm going to tell them, yeah, my, my balls hurt. And there's a clump of veins in my balls right now. I remember going through this multiple times, having to call on the tram, like, you know, the public transport on the way to work. And eventually, yeah, finally getting an appointment, having to like, you know, get an Uber there and stuff. And doctor quickly just touches my balls and says, no, oh, it's only one and it's only on one side. So it's fine. Don't worry about it. Like, you'll be absolutely fine. Why? This thing leads to infertility. And a doctor looked me in the eyes and said, it's fine. You don't need to worry about it. Why? So I, I leave it. You know, that's my responsibility. It's my fault. I left there and pursue it more. I would have loved to, but like the stress of having to like book an NHS doctor's appointment is just through the roof, especially when you're not, you know, with good mental health. Eventually, about a year or two later, I rebooked it in 2022, 2021. Go for doctor's appointment. They check it. They say confirm that, okay, I've got one. They send me to an ultrasound and I swear to God, the, the nurse or the doctor who did the ultrasound moved it around like my, my testicles for like barely a minute, bro, maybe about 30 seconds and literally already concluded 30 seconds in that, nope, no, there's nothing there. I can't see anything. And I was like pleading. I literally, I know this is like a bit embarrassing, bro. I stood up, grabbed my ball sack to her and I know you can see it. Like you can, I know it's, it's fucking funny, but it's like, bro. It, it's not because I was worried about my fertility. I was worried about not being able to have children. I already thought of like, you know, it was already like, yeah, you know, I've already affirmed it now that, yep, I'm going to be infertile now because these people won't take it seriously. I'm literally stood up, leg on the, the little patient um, uh, seat, whatever it is, like, like asking them, no, no, put like scan this bit on the ultrasound. It's there. It's like a huge clump of veins. And she literally scanned it for another 30 seconds and concluded that it wasn't there. And that I should, you know, it's all in my head. I should just, and I had a fuck that big fucking clump of veins in my balls bro like almost like a third testicle size of veins just like clumped up all tangled together and um lived with it again for a bit and i remember that you know i was i knew that she was wrong but it was like the stress of just going back to these appointments and getting told that nothing was wrong was just annoying me it was only when i came here to dubai that i concluded that i'm never ever gonna get free healthcare ever again i'm always gonna pay for healthcare for dentist everything because i don't want this stress of like going to see a doctor who doesn't want to book you in for the treatment that you need because it's just a drain on their resources and you know the, they don't get paid or anything. So I go to a, I rec get recommended a doctor here from a friend of mine, Raphael, who's another YouTuber with a wealthy expat YouTube name. He's the one who like brought me here to the UK and set up my company here. I literally just messaged him. I was like, "Bro, do you know any good doctors like to get your balls checked?" And he, he was just sound with it. He like understood and connected me with this really good guy, Doctor Emitias. And um, went to go see him in a clinic. He feels my balls and he straight away is like, yeah, but like that's grade two on the left side, grade one on the right side. 
books me in for an ultrasound and this was the best point go to the old ultrasound pay 200 pounds for it which is quite a lot for a lot of people but i've got to the point now where that's absolutely worth it like the return on investment's worth it i swear the ultrasound doctor like the, the girl who did it she was on it for more than half an hour i'm talking every single millimeter of my nutsack she she scanned like three times and like got a full thingy so many different angles and everything i don't mean to be like you know vulgar or anything but like bro she she fully scanned every single part because i paid for it because it wasn't like some free nhs like just trash service this was like okay this was a transaction of my money for their expertise and she fully sees it she sees that it's advanced now to the bottom side so varicoceles are generally like you know the, the top of like if you grab your nutsack right now you should feel your two balls and you should feel like some veins like thin veins going to those balls and that's it if you feel like a clump of veins and you can almost see through the skin of your ball sack where there's like almost like these veins like pressing against the skin that's a varicocele and that's grade one grade two is when it's above the ball and that's it but advanced varicocele is when it's like so developed that now it's underneath the ball as well and that's what i had so she said it was advanced and then she's looked at the right side and said yeah that one's fine that one's only grade one but it could develop spent ages scanning it bro i even got bored but you know i was grateful it was i was there for 30 minutes of this nurse just like scanning my ball sack and confirming yep 100 you've got it the moment she said that to me for the first time i had this like breath of release like okay phew, finally it's like you know, a doctor has actually confirmed the problem that I know that I've had for three years. And I know for a fact the only reason why they confirmed it here is because I paid for it directly. Because it's not the NHS. I don't care what anyone from the UK says. The NHS are all heroes. No, they're not. No, they're not. The NHS as a whole system has failed. The fact that you have to call up at like 8 a.m. Like me and Sam spoke about this. This all the time. Like Sam, you tried to like call the, the doctors once, didn't you? Every single time... Uh, that I had any sort of issue with my mental health back in the day, I would have to, uh, exactly like Hamza said, I thought it was just a thing for me, but apparently it's just across the board. You have to call the doctors exactly when they open for business. And there's like a fucking Hunger Games free-for-all to try and get a doctor's appointment. And literally within a minute, the entire day is booked. So if you have dog shit mental health like I did, this stressed you out beyond belief and to the point where I would simply just put off any any work that needed to be done or any, you know, any problems which I was having. It's, oh, it's fine, you know. Um, I would actually get my mom to do it for me because, she, I don't know, she was, she was good at getting through to them for some reason. I don't know what she was doing, which, which I wasn't doing. <laughs> Same with you, right, Hamza? Your mom was good at getting through. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what, yeah, I don't know what it is, but... Yeah, it's fucking, it's awful. It's, it's, it's a failed system. It's completely failed on all fronts. The people working there, it's, it's not their fucking fault. They just don't have the government funding. And they never will because, like, if you work for the government, the UK government, you will end up just getting fucked perpetually. So, I mean, I don't blame, I think any sort of doctors or people in that profession um, who have half a brain left the UK years ago because they saw the direction that the health system was going in. So uh, it, it's not really their fault, to be honest. But uh, yeah, I wish I had a nurse who scanned my balls for half an hour straight, Hamza. That sounds fun. Was <laughs> <laughs> she hot? Yeah, she's all right. <laughs> that one. So yeah, so I haven't had a sperm test just yet, but there is a chance that I might be infertile because I've had a varicocele on the left side of my balls for about two to three years and on the right side for about a month or so. So I've not checked just yet, but there is a, there is a chance that I can't have children, which um, I knew even years ago that I was going to make a video like this. I've, I already like envisioned the video was going to be titled like, I can't have children. It's like a thumbnail of me crying. It's, it's scary that like that's already been in my mind with the experience that I've been through. And I don't know, I see it in the lens of like another thing that of another aspect of the war on masculinity where these kind of problems aren't, aren't taken seriously. But yeah, might be infertile. <laughs>